Greetings to you, my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Welcome once again to the midweek tune-up in the Word period here at Wesley United Methodist Church, Austin, Texas. I am the pastor of the church, the Reverend Sylvester E. Chase, Jr., and thanks be to God that you have tuned in just to hear a little short word. Hopefully, we'll carry you on throughout the rest of this week and hopefully even a few more days. We want to look at a little scripture coming out of the New Testament. The New Testament. Out of the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, and the first part of the verse of 17, Galatians 5, 16, and 17. I will be reading out of this particular translation the Good News Translation Bible. The Good News Translation Bible, Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. Listen. Paul is speaking. Paul says these words to us. What I say is this, let the spirit direct your lives and you will not satisfy the desires of the human nature. Verse 17, the beginning of it, 17a, for what our human nature wants is opposed to what the spirit wants. And what the spirit wants is opposed to what our human nature wants. The word of God for us, the people of God, thanks be to God, amen. Amen and amen. And from th those particular verses of scripture out of Galatians chapter 5, 16 and 17, coming from the Good News Translation Bible, we use as our theme on this particular Wednesday, June the 29th, Getting it together. Getting it together. And when I use that particular theme or subject, I am saying this, that we are still trying to get our lives together. We are somewhat like Paul. When we try to do right, we still do wrong. We want to improve. We want to get better. But it seems like we as individuals, as well as we as a nation, we are falling so short of trying to get our lives together and doing the will of God. And I do believe we need to put some degree of self-control on our lives. And that is not easy. And one of the things, this is what I want to point out today, is if we're going to get our lives together and they be what we want them to be in the eyesight of God, we are going to have to depend upon Christ's power to 
help us. Did we get that? To get our lives together in line with God's will and putting God first and living right and doing right, saying the right thing, being there for others, we are going to have to depend upon Christ's power to help us. Because we can see that we are falling short in doing the right thing, the right things day in and day out. The same problems we've been dealing with and talking about for years and we don't seem to be making much progress. For me to get my life even in order even more, I am going to have to depend upon Christ's power. And that power that I'm talking about is the Holy Ghost. In our text, Galatians chapter 5. There in verse 16, out of the Good News Translation Bible, it says, let the Spirit direct your lives, and you will not satisfy the desires of the human nature. Let the Spirit direct your lives, and you will not satisfy the desires of the human nature. Well, in looking at this verse of Scripture, the sequence in this Scripture I want us to look at is very important. It says, let the Spirit direct your life. Let the Holy Spirit direct your life. That's the first part of that sentence, verse 16. And then it says, and you will not satisfy the desires of the human nature. Now, Notice there in that particular scripture, it doesn't say you will not have those desires to do wrong, not to walk down the right paths, to speak the right words. It doesn't say you won't have those desires. But listen up to this point. Spirit-filled people still experience the desires of the flesh. Spirit-filled. We are spirit-filled, but we still experience the desires of our flesh. It's just not that they won't satisfy them. That's the only thing that it says. You see, spirit-filled people experience the desires of the flesh, but we won't satisfy them. We usually get the sequence backwards. We say, I'm not good enough to have God's spirit in my life. God doesn't say. that you have to get it together and then I will help you. He says, let my Holy Spirit control you while you are still struggling with your problem. You can't say I'm not good enough to have God's Spirit in, in my life or once I get my life together, then I'm going to let the Holy Spirit control my life. God doesn't say get your act together and then I will help you. No, he doesn't say that. He says, let my Holy Spirit control you while you are still struggling with your problem and I will help 
you change. Getting it together. The sequence in that text, verse 16, is the difference. You would not say, I am going to get well first, and then I am going to see the doctor. That would be absurd, would it not? You need Christ in your life now while you are trying to get it together. Why? Because Christ has the power to help you change. And we can see right now that we can't change on our own. We need the help of Christ's power within. Well, I hear someone saying this, but I really do, Pastor, enjoy doing what I do, even though it might be wrong, and you know it is. That is, if we look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25, it says that there are pleasures of sin for a season in our lives. None of us, you, me, none of us would sin if it immediately made us miserable. But what we are doing brings some degree of satisfaction, does it not? Now, our main point I want us to remember as we come to a close, don't look for God to nullify the appeal of sin. Nullify the appeal of you wanting to do wrong. But this is what we need to do. We need to ask him for the power to overcome the appeal to do wrong or to want to sin. Did we get that? Don't look for God to nullify the appeal of sin, but ask him for the power to overcome its appeal. I'm getting it, it together. Now look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 in the Living Bible. In the Living Bible, Philippians 2, verse 13. Paul is speaking. For God is at work within you, helping you want to obey him and then helping you do what he wants. From that, we can say we will receive the desire and the power to do what is right. So if we're going to try to really do what is right, we must depend upon Christ's power within us. If you want to live right, you want to walk, right down the narrow path. If you want to be able to speak words of encouragement, if you want to be able to bring comfort to those on a steady basis, those who are hurting, the text says, let the Spirit direct your lives. Today, right here, right now, where you are, and you will not satisfy the desires of human nature. Your hate will no longer be there. You will want to love. You will want to build people up and not tear them down. You will want to lead people down the right road. You will want to speak the truth in season and out of season. But you must let the spirit of the Lord direct your lies, and the text says, and you will not satisfy the desires 
of the human nature. Well, we don't have it all together right now in our lives. But then again, we don't really need to get it all together in the sense if we haven't asked God into our lives. We don't have to get our lives together and then say, God, help me. Say, Lord, help me now to get my life in order together and to live the right life. You will want me. The Lord is saying, let my Holy Spirit control you, my Holy Spirit, while you are struggling with your problem. And I will help you change. Can we do that? Let the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, come upon you this week and have a fresh anointing to take control and to direct your life in getting it together. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And amen. Keep the faith until we come together again. Hope to see you this coming Sunday virtually or in person on this first Sunday of July, the 4th of July weekend, Sunday, July the 3rd, as we will celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. Keep the faith, peace.